Travis Wayne Goodsell. I am so far backed up today. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the news yet from last night. I haven't gotten to uh, watching Superstore yet. I might be able to turn off the light now. Uh, and uh, But we have one last video that I uh, was inspired by God to share with you today. <laughs> if you're new to the site, which the majority of you are, uh, LDS critic, born and raised Mormon, and so I know all the dirt. I know where all the literal bodies are buried. Uh, but this time we're talking about uh, LDS Mormon brainwashing. And the church brainwashing techniques. Uh, I've got a playlist for brainwashing. Uh, if you want to review those, um, I'll have to go searching because I've got a lot of different playlists. Uh, I'm going to school in America. I got very bored real quick because I quickly learned that all the information that I was forced to memorize could be found in a textbook. So why not just give me the textbook and I can refer to it if I use the information later on in life. <laughs> and so if I could show you uh, the uh, books on top which are my reference books and then I don't know if you can see some yeah, the pile behind the games. Uh, all these books are also reference books, and eventually I can. I've got planned to scan them into a digital format. Uh, anyway, uh, reference books can't be used as a digital format, though, especially when they're five hundred thousand page books. Uh, but yeah, because I realized that as a kid, I only memorized when I was forced to memorize, and I couldn't get out of it otherwise. And so that's where cramming comes in. You quickly do a memorization into your short-term memory, and then once the test is completed, short-term memory is gone and everything is deleted. So, uh, you get the A for the test, and uh, you can go relax and live your life again. Uh, this is the, the system of our education system. Memorization. What they tell us we're supposed to memorize. So when we get to areas that are expansive in data, where they're selectively providing us with the information they want us to memorize, such as government, or American history, or world history. That's why people complain about uh, the lack of black influence in American history and government textbooks. Uh, for that specific reason that kids are purposely selected as to what they're supposed to memorize. And so the same thing is done here in Utah. Uh, and Utah has turned out to have a, a good number of memorizers who uh, excel in memorization as they go into the honors programs of, of memorization and and become valedictorians, perfect scores on SATs, and what have you not. Um, but there's a flaw in the system. <gasps> yes, just like with robots, there's a flaw in the system because man is in charge of the programming. And the flaw can be explained in a video that I did about the tale of two brothers <laughs> that nobody gave a damn about. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm the oldest child. 
and uh, uh, when my brother was born, he had colic. And so my mother, instead of giving me all the attention, sat me in front of the TV to watch Sesame Street. So ed my first education was Sesame Street. Uh, outside of parents feeding me and changing my diaper and all that stuff. Uh, so my first real education came from Sesame Street. Although I guess my mom did read to me uh, the Are You My Mother book. Uh, but uh, my brother had colic, and so, yeah, I had to take care of myself from there on out. Teach myself and figure out life all by myself as uh, I'm getting close to turning two years old. So, isn't that great? Little two-year-old forced to learn life on his own. Uh, Dad was going to school at Berkeley and uh, graduating soon after, uh, well, Todd was born in November, so he finished uh, the spring semester and then we moved to Michigan. Uh, but uh, uh, my brother, because he ended up getting all the attention uh, became a social recluse. <laughs> he was not a social butterfly uh, because he was a mama's boy and I was my own man <laughs> which the parents disapproved of and so they figured I was the failure in the family. Uh, but uh, because of that I had to teach myself. I had to learn what truth is. Where my brother relied on mommy to tell him what truth is. Mommy said it, therefore it's true. Just like the water boy. Mama said, <laughs> girls are out of the devil. <laughs> and, and sure enough, that's not too far off from his personality. Uh, I can't remember his name. Happy Gilmore, uh, whatever. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Uh, he's a little more comedic and, and uh, extreme. Uh, but if you turn it into a Mormon culture uh, character, that's my brother. And so my brother grew up thinking that uh, he had to gain an education so that he can go to college, get into a good school. And all of us were taught that, but I realized, what do I need school for? All I need to get a job at Blockbuster Video is a high school degree, and even that I might not need. My video is about to be processed here, so when it processes, I'll be publishing it. So, excuse the interruptions. Um, but, yeah, my brother was stuck in the old school of thinking because we were in the 80s when we were in uh, teens, when we were teens. And uh, uh, there was a transition going on in America that our parents were unaware of because they already are established. It's our generation that was now experiencing the new transition uh, with the new economy that uh, would not allow me to hold a blockbuster video job and uh, have my own apartment and a vehicle and all the food that I needed um, with just a DVD player and a TV. <laughs> So, uh, my parents, of course, wanted us kids to grow up in the system of the old school, uh, clueless about what was changing in America. And uh, 
And so Todd, however, played right into it, did the old school, went to the honors classes, uh, and memorized and focused on doing homework once he got home, so he had no social life. He wasn't participating in any extracurricular activities like basketball and volleyball, like his older brother was, and uh, and so he was just a, a student. That's what he was. Oh, somebody finally showed up with a like on Mormon thumbs down or conscious concessions to LDS church crimes. And so with a Mormon background on top of that, you have um, the belief that the Mormon church is the church of Lucifer's plan of happiness, taking away agency, having a whole bunch of commandments and standards and values and all sorts of hedges around just the one law, love. And so uh, my brother was very strict as to what he listened to for entertainment and what he watched for entertainment, unlike his older brother who is learning uh, from such classics as Die Hard and uh, Lethal Weapon and uh, even Schindler's List. Uh, parents took us kids uh, the four of us at the time to watch the new release movie in the theaters of JFK because my parents were involved in that uh, they were born in the 40s and so in the 60s when uh, JFK was assassinated uh, they were adults by that point or teenagers depending on which year they were um, born um, and so they wanted us to know about this significant historical uh, American event and uh, and so uh, I was watching it and uh, my brother however because of Joe Pesci got offended and walked out of the theater it was too much for him and so, was it my dad or my mom who went out with him to be with him? Uh, whereas I stayed to watch the whole thing. I want to watch this. This is R-rated. I get to watch it. <laughs> and so, yes, I know all about the different conspiracy theories. And the movie version is all wrong. I know who killed him. And it was not Ted Cruz's dad. Although he may have been one of the shooters. One of the shooters. There were H. <laughs> Not going to go down there. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and so yes, my brother uh, uh, stayed away from worldly entertainment and worldly music because he he went to his mom, our mom. I don't claim her anymore. Uh, <laughs> and said, I like this song, Mommy. And it was Olivia Newton-John, Let's Get Physical. And uh, oh, it talks about exercise, and exercise is in the word of wisdom, and it's good, right? No! It's evil! <laughs> so that was my brother's sex ed, which was more than my sex ed, which uh, came from other sources because I had to figure it out on my own and I still didn't quite figure it out by the first time I got married <sighs> but uh, uh, so my brother was completely scared and terrified of the world and the world's art and uh, and so this this brainwashing system uh, uh, carried on as he went to BYU. And those evil BYU Mormons, oh, they tricked him into liking classical music. <laughs> That's how you get ya. They slowly turn you, little by little. <laughs> I, I could
could have easily destroyed that turning of my brother by simply saying, uh, Todd, I, I saw this movie called Amadeus, and apparently Amadeus was evil. <laughs> they literally, in his day, thought Amadeus was evil because he was not playing the right chords, the right keys. <laughs> And so when you listen to the prophets talk about all the tune, the tone, and the, all the, <laughs> the beat, <laughs> that's where they got it from, was from the days of Amadeus Mozart, where people were saying he's not playing the right keys. <laughs> and therefore it's of the devil. <laughs> So, yeah, I would have had great fun if I <laughs> would have gone to BYU rather than Rick's. <laughs> and I uh, hadn't gone on my mission while he was still going to BYU. Oh, man. <sighs> so, yeah I, yeah, I went to Rick's. He was still in school, high school, and then I went on my mission. So then he started BYU, and that's where he learned all the Mozart stuff. Uh, thinking that it was okay. And so it gets worse, <laughs> or better, depending on how you want to look at it. When he went to uh, the University of Michigan, uh, because they had a sociology program, uh, or a, G uh, well, he was, at BYU, he wasn't quite sure what he wanted to be. He tried uh, geology uh, and zoology, uh, but I, I'm not sure if he wasn't sure yet when he went to the uh, University of Michigan, because I wasn't in his life. I was gone. But uh, from what I can remember from what I think my mom told me uh, through letters or emails, I uh, was, uh, or, well, it would have been letters. We didn't have email back then. <laughs> I was that... Uh, uh, he eventually settled on social studies to get a social worker degree. <laughs> a complete waste of time. Uh, although I did take a few classes uh, as I was checking out uh, social work up in the University of Lethbridge. Um, but uh, they were specifically tailored to sociology of religion. Uh, so I was skipping the prerequisite classes, just going right into what I wanted. Uh, but my brother uh, at Michigan, uh, for the music, for example, uh, those heathen non-Mormons tricked him again, like the BYU Mormons tricked him. And now he started to like otherworldly music like Enya. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, my brother continued with piano lessons, whereas I said, uh, Teacher, uh, my basketball or baseball schedule is, is just too, too time consuming. I just can't get around to practicing, even though I've memorized Twinkle Twinkle and I can play Twinkle Twinkle and and for some reason I have the ability to compose my own music. <laughs> I just have no interest in doing so. Uh, and so I'm going to not come to your lessons anymore. <laughs> I didn't tell my mom. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, yeah, he was always playing church hymns uh, and uh, paranoid about playing any other music, sheet music. So, yeah, my brother didn't play Stairway to Heaven, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Michigan finally turned him. Uh, Michigan also scared him to death because they were saying, um, we can't approve this thesis research uh, because you're too Mormon biased. 
he was he was doing research on the city of Ephraim and uh, uh, he was too involved in Mormonism to be able to clearly see outside of the Mormon box and, and Todd just didn't understand and so he played the religion card to force them to give him his uh, doctorate and uh, accept his thesis work <laughs> so yay Mormonism really helps in society uh, but uh, with uh, with the church in involving the memorization not only do they teach us to memorize what standards that we have to just know what we can and can't do which sometimes contradict each other because if we're not allowed to see R-rated movies but my parents are taking me to an R-rated movie um, are my parents sinners? Do I need to kill them? <laughs> That's If you're not familiar in the news right now there's a Mormon who killed her husband thinking she's the Mormon goddess of the apocalypse so yes Mormons this is how dangerous Mormon brainwashing is uh, when you get taught wrong uh, and so the uh, the church selectively re reveals what Mormons are allowed to know and not just with church history but with doctrine as well and so the previous video I had a lot of fun exposing the error of interpretation of Moroni chapter 10 verse 3 through 5 all Mormons know that scripture they're forced to memorize it in the church from seminary uh, and then into Institute and then on their missions uh, and they have the scripture mastery program and in the mission they have scripture mastery uh, where you have to memorize selected scriptures and the problem with that is is that Mormons get conditioned to say oh this is what the church approves of for me learning and I don't want to go beyond that and so when the church says study your scriptures Mormons here read the scriptures I'm studying no because Mormons think from their school education that if they're studying a topic at school all they're doing is just reading and memorizing what they're supposed to remember for the test and it's the same in Mormonism the church says these are the scripture masteries these are the most important scriptures for you to know and completely taken out of the big context of the whole of scriptures and thus the church limits the scriptures to the quad because of what Joseph Smith created after Joseph Smith was murdered Brigham for the most part didn't really add anything else of his own, of his own other than the revelation hey follow me into the desert in violation of Jesus who said don't follow the man who says Jesus is in the desert Matthew 24 <laughs> so, that's not in your scripture mastery and so therefore Mormons you don't know that scripture <laughs> and so, there's a lot of scriptures that Mormons don't know <coughs> and what's worse is that this memorization method process dumbs down people because they only quote passages they don't know how to apply the passages in their lives so when it talks about Nephi being told by his father hey I got a uh, I was told in a dream we have to go get the plates so you boys go get it and uh, then the boys go and the uh, older brothers are saying I don't want to do this we are rich why are we leaving and being poor and Nephi said, I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded, for the Lord will give no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them to 
blah, blah, blah. See, I don't memorize. <laughs> but I know the topic so well that it's almost as if I do have it memorized because I know the application of it. And that's what Mormons don't have. They don't know how to apply the precepts of the Book of Mormon. And so, uh, Alma chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, is kind of important to get correct in your interpretation. Because if you're thinking that you're just going to read, ponder, and pray, and then whatever inspiration comes to your mind, that's the final conclusion, and you don't need to study anymore, you don't need to do research, you don't need to actually prove it, <laughs> you've been deceived. <laughs> so, uh, the whole memorization thing uh, is really messing Mormons up. Because what should be the method of teaching for people is what we're turning into in the world with technology and videos. Uh, even though I'm not entertaining, most of you have already clicked, up and clicked me off. So, uh, uh, you guys are wanting something entertaining, but in the process of entertaining, you're being educated also. In a real, well, fantasy experience that can be applied, or you can figure out how to apply it for yourself. Uh, HBO's Dream On, while I was on my mission, uh, came out, and... Uh, uh, talked about uh, that concept of TV uh, influencing kids. I, myself, was a TV child because my brother had colic and so TV became my education system. So when my parents, when they were older, when I was older, uh, wanted to restrict my TV viewing. Well, oh, hell no. You guys put me here because you said that TV is where I'm supposed to be educated and I'm being entertained and learning a lot from TV I'm learning about the con of advertising despite the, um, the the funny things that come out of it silly rabbit tricks are for prostitutes <laughs> and, and, uh, and so uh, yeah eight to ten hours a day on a school day even I would watch TV uh, and so uh, to then turn around and say your method of education is wrong and you need to cut back so that's what parents are being told by the church to do to their kids now all oh, the kids are spending too much face time they need to get off of their cell phones and their devices and the computer and Go interact with real humans. It's the same old situation. It's just a different medium. Uh, even with pornography, the debate that evangelicals raised uh, it still continues to this day. It's now just in the digital format. They've forgotten all about the magazines and the uh, uh, videos, VHS videos. And so now they're moving on to digital. And so even psychiatry is playing along because, hey, we can get more customer clients uh, and that we can drug and give us more money. So, yeah, it's all big con uh, as they deceive you with the fallacious brainwashing tactic of selective memorization because uh, for pornography for example uh, and those of you who have endured this video this long I'll reward you with porn <laughs> society especially Mormon society puts fear they fear monger people porn it's evil you're gonna go blind you're gonna it causes the frontal lobe to activate and all this other crap. 
and when you apply it, you realize, okay, my parents saw me naked as they were changing my diapers and bathing me. Doctors see me naked as I'm changing and they're doing physical examinations. Police officers see you naked when they strip you down to search you. <laughs> uh, and, this is most important, your spouse sees you during sex. Unless your spouse insists on turning out the lights and having sex under the covers in bed. <laughs> oh my god. And so, uh, all those applications in life are proof that this whole fear mongering of porn is just nonsense. It's just a scam. They're distracting you from the real issues that they are causing upon you. Uh, and again, like I said, love. And so, you know, don't fall for the trap. Yes, I know, we've been born and raised in that trap. America does it with the school system, and then the church runs with it for the church's education. Uh, and the church goes to more extremities than the schooling education, because the church doesn't want anything to do with science. They're turning away from science that Joseph Smith was trying to promote. And that's, that's sad. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's one thing to be able to memorize a scripture passage. It's another thing to memorize a story. But it's a completely different thing to know how the story is to be applied in your life. How you can use the story to learn and develop tactics in life. Uh, and that's why uh, the war stories are actually excellent military strategies, even though they're plagiarized. Uh, but uh, uh, if you've seen the Simpsons episode where Home, or, uh, Bart Simpson gets uh, recruited by the military into secret ops where he gets to kill people using video games. Uh, that's a practical application for the use of video games. But yet, what do people do? They complain. Oh, video games is destroying our child. It's turning them into couch potatoes and, and blah, blah, blah. It's ruining their social behavior skills. And Have you ever played the games? Especially when they're able to play with other people and see that there's actually competitions where teams uh, play against other teams. And it's a great learning tool. Uh, if it's properly programmed. But again, human error uh, causes problems. And so, not all movies are good for education. But you got to understand it has nothing to do with the rating of the movie. It has everything to do about the protagonist versus the antagonist of the movie. Those are the precepts you need to pay attention to. And if the protagonist is in reality being shown as the antagonist or having antagonistic tendencies and it turns into the protagonist winning by using antagonist principles. Then you got to actually wonder what is actually being taught to you. 
uh, I had fun with Mormons here in Utah uh, when Harry Potter became popular. Uh, everybody was saying, oh, Harry Potter is the greatest, oh, it's so wonderful, I've got all the books, I've read them all, and it's not, the movies aren't really true to the books, but, but it's okay. Uh, do you understand it's witchcraft? <laughs> I'm such a bad guy. <laughs> and it was even better when this Twilight thing came out. <laughs> Okay, you've got a teenage girl who's trying to decide whether she wants to be a necrophiliac or a bestiality. <laughs> a bestial. <laughs> oh, the fun I have. But uh, uh, people got too hyped up with the outer appearance, the entertainment. And you don't pay attention to the underlining teachings. And, and so Mormons, the Mormon church can be right to some degree, but they're wrong in the sense of what they're doing to Mormons. Because Mormons are not applying those same principles with their own church. And now the church is causing confusion as to who to follow in leadership. Do we follow our bishop when he contradicts the stake president or the prophets? Do we follow the stake president over the bishop or the leaders of the church? Do we just follow the leaders of the church over the Book of Mormon? Do we follow the president of the church over the apostles? See, there's confusion in the church now. And thus my video <laughs> cannot serve 15 masters. <laughs> so... Uh, this is this is where the selective memorization brainwashing tactic causes lots of problems and so I hope with my practical application lessons uh, you'll understand and begin to recognize how the church has been uh, uh, messing up your life and not just like my brother, I got his life messed up, um, but uh, many other Mormons who are committing crimes for the church and because of the church. Uh, the, the Mormon goddess of the apocalypse, the bishop, rapist, child rapist, uh, the the thousands of rape kits that are not getting processed quick enough the church's financial criminal operations uh, and so I hope you understand that's why because it's not God's church they're using brainwashing tactics because they're not God's church so there's my conclusion. That's how you properly argue something. You present premises to lead to the conclusion. And uh, if you're presenting only selected premises, as in selective memorization, you're going to have an incorrect conclusion. So there you go. I tied both videos into one. And we're at 40 minutes, and it's almost 11. Time for lunch now. <laughs> uh, I still haven't gotten to... Uh. <laughs>